Hey there, and welcome to the Pseudo Show, brought to you by the Destination Linux Network. Today, we wrap up our conversation on DevOps with an interview with the founder of Cycloid. All that and more on the Pseudo Show. Hey there, and welcome to the Pseudo Show, where business meets open source. This week, I'm joined by Benjamin Braille. Benjamin was one of the first employees at Innovance, which was an OpenStack consultancy company based in Paris and Quebec. Innovance was later acquired by Red Hat, where Benjamin was a cloud business development manager in Europe. Benjamin is now the founder of Cycloid. Cycloid is focused on hybrid cloud and DevOps solutions, which we will get into today. This episode of the Pseudo Show is brought to you by DigitalOcean. Head on over to do.co slash tux2022 to get started with a $100 credit. DigitalOcean has a comprehensive portfolio of compute, storage, database, and networking products that put your cloud infrastructure in capable hands so you and your teams can get back to doing what matters most, building world-changing apps that grow your business. Predictable pricing, robust product docs, and services that developers love. Get support at every stage of growth with simple, powerful comp cloud computing. Get growing at DigitalOcean. As a listener of the Pseudo Show and a member of the DLN community, you can get started for free. In fact, it's better than free because DigitalOcean is giving you a $100 credit when you sign up at do.co slash tux2022. We want to thank DigitalOcean for sponsoring this episode of the Pseudo Show. Today's episode is brought to you by Bitwarden. Bitwarden is the easiest and safest way for individuals, teams, and business organizations to store, share, and sync sensitive data. Bitwarden is an open source password management tool whose feature set rivals any other tool on the market today. Not only is Bitwarden open source, it is regularly audited by third-party security professionals. You can get started for free at bitwarden.com slash DLN and plans start at just $10 per year. Thank you to Bitwarden for sponsoring the pseudo show and the entire Destination Linux network. Benjamin, welcome to the pseudo show. I'm glad you were able to make the time today. My pleasure. Though I've already introduced you in the beginning of the, the podcast, can you just give us a brief introduction? Uh, on your background? Yeah, with pleasure. So I've been in the first startup where we made an all-in on OpenStack that was called back in the time Innovance. That's been acquired by Red Hat, uh, where uh, I was uh, working quite a lot uh, at EMEA level for uh, uh, what we call, as you know, the merger product, OpenStack, OpenShift, and CloudForms. And then um, based on, the, um, on, on this experience, I've launched Cycloid a couple of years ago. What really brought us together was uh, getting your point of view on DevOps, but I want to dive into Cycloid, uh, the new company that you that you founded. I, I think a lot of the solutions that, that Cycloid's developing are game changing, especially for established cloud infrastructure. I think they're really cool. So, doing my research, uh, I've been thinking about uh, about this, but one of the so I want, want just let's start unpacking this right away. So what does Cycloid do? Like what, what's the, and what was the inspiration for, for, uh, behind, uh, Cycloid? Cause some of it, I, I think I might know where some of that inspiration comes from, just given your background, but I thought I'd, uh, uh, you know, like to get your point of view on it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if we. Back a little bit from my experience, I've been in a system integrator, managed service provider, multi-cloud. So I've lived all the difficulties to hire DevOps, to uh, keep our talent, you know, because as you know, the market back at the time and still right now is uh, really tense. Uh, we had the difficulties to bring satisfaction from our customers because they all, we, we never answer enough fast when it comes to when they open a ticket, you know, or when they have some request and they wanted to have flexibility on everything that we have done on the on-prem and multi-cloud. But uh, as you know, when you are doing some DevOps and managed service stuff, 
uh, you need to respect some SLA and um, it's always complicated to bring flexibility and SLA in the same world. And I see also uh, this kind of frustration when it comes to um, the importance of the developer experience. You know, how do you help these kind of people interact with all the tools and cloud and everything that you are doing on the DevOps side uh, that, that are quite, uh, I mean, tricky. Uh, so I, I see this complicity for, for this end user to be capable to interact with everything of this. And um, this was the first part. And we didn't succeed. That is why we made it all in, because at some point, you can't be an expert on all the cloud provider and all this stuff. And we invest everything on OpenStack. And then at Red Hat, uh, I, I saw also the necessity to uh, not only work on the technology area, which is uh, really important also, but also to work on how do you help these developer ops, DevOps working together, and how do you help this uh, developer being capable to interact with all these tools and cloud uh, without losing the control, the governance, and the efficiency for the DevOps, uh, uh, the DevOps world. And I saw back at the time that uh, the cloud management uh, topic that, uh, as you know, we, uh, let's say we, but Red Hat has invested, you know, uh, on this. I saw the quite of limitation of this kind of approach because at the end, if marketingly wise, uh, it, do, it does make sense to have a cloud management platform when you have all the features of a cloud provider in one place. When you go to the to the ground and you speak with DevOps, a DevOps will never go through one interface, one centralized interface. They will continue to use tools and cloud directly. Uh, so I think it was a little bit too early when Red Hat uh, worked on this topic, and we had multiple of conversation on this. As you know, um, it's always complicated to uh, open some new business unit inside Red Hat and you you know you know technology field. So I felt that it was the right moment to uh, uh, take my wins, you know, and uh, let's try to help these uh, people working together based on all these assumptions, you know, like difficulties to hire, difficulties to upskill people, to retain talent, to be capable to work with uh, uh, with all these tools and cloud, you know, like an average of 28 tools, uh, according to Gartner on the topic of infrastructures. I mean, how, how even when you are DevOps, you're capable to... To, to be an expert on these 28 tools, I mean, it's really complicated. So, yeah, I mean, the inspiration is is this, you know, is like uh, I saw my friend like that were in a technical field, always struggling to answer uh, faster enough and to be really efficient when it comes to the operation. So I say, okay, we, we need to rethink how we do collaborate. It, it couldn't be only to answer open a ticket when you have a request on on DevOps or Ops side, you know? And to be frank with you, I didn't believe about the the, the, the theory that everyone will become DevOps, you know? I mean, when I see the, <laughs> the difficulties to develop some expertise, even just let's say on OpenStack and AWS, let's just, just take one, you know? Uh, to me, when I, when I saw my customers, I said, they will never succeed to, you know, become that everyone will become devops and then that 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 you will be the perfect developer on the front end and back end but in the same time you will be the the perfect devops on the uh, on on antipole terraform whatever you are using you know and the cloud provider i mean i would love you know <laughs> i would love that uh, everyone is is becoming devops but they definitely need some help and 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 they definitely need some guidance, some rails to be capable to address all these tools of cloud. Otherwise, we will continue uh, since you know five years, according to the DevOps state of DevOps report, the eighty percent are struggling with DevOps and hybrid cloud. I mean, it's still the same, you know. Yeah, uh, it. Yeah, what I what I'm seeing is, or I'm seeing like DevOps teams, which I really don't see as a any different than what was going on before and they're not new, new branding same name <laughs> yeah. i mean same i mean new branding new name but same team you know just like yeah. Uh... <laughs> exactly. yeah and and like they're not adopting what i consider to be core tenants 
of DevOps you know, as part of that culture. Like they're not adopting infrastructure as code. They're not ad- adopting, um, they ha- probably have some sort of continuous delivery, but they're not adopting it to it on the infrastructure side. They're only, they only think of it in the purely in that lens of dev. That, that, that's one of the things that really caught my eye <laughs> about, about what you're doing at Cycloid was the, because CI was using the same breath as testing your infrastructure. And I'm like, yeah, we need, we need more of this. We need more conversations around this. So, and I, maybe I already answered this question right there, but yeah, what, what, what's the overall problem that you're trying to solve uh, with, uh, with your company, with your solutions? Yeah. yeah, so we have developed what we call a, a hybrid cloud DevOps platform. So um, what is the main goal? The, the main goal is to, to democratize the DevOps and the cloud adoption at scale. You know, it's really to be capable for anyone that are not an expert, if you do believe that everyone won't become DevOps, but you need, you believe that uh, they should be capable to interact with all these tools and cloud without having to, to, to open a ticket for the DevOps when they want to change the size of the instance on Terraform, on Zbot or whatever you are using, you know. So first of all, we are here to, to be part of this, uh, what we call a uh, DevX improvement and to be capable for anyone to use these tools on cloud without having to develop this expertise. So this is the first area. The second area is, um, is about how do you help uh, this DevOps team being much more efficient, you know, because I really do believe that on the DevOps journey, everyone lives the same. You know, you have Dev on one side, ops on, ops on the other side doesn't work. Then you build a DevOps that have the mission to fluidify all these things. At the end, it's another team or it's the same team just renamed and it's still silos. So then there is the question of, do I build a self-service portal, a platform, or do I buy it? Because at some point you need an interface to be capable to discuss on the same layer, and this is this is what we develop based on our experience to improve the efficiency of the day-to-day operation. Because um, there is plenty of tools to deploy, so whatever you like it, you pick it. There is plenty of these tools on the market, but I, I do really think we do not focus enough about how do you help these DevOps focus on one matter, which is the improving the automation, uh, take care about the day-to-day operation, because we all know that uh, there is no magic tricks, you know, at the end, uh, you need to manage Kubernetes, you need to manage all this stuff. And uh, to help them focusing also on the evangelization and less on the 50% repetitive task, you know, that no one wants to care when it comes to, can you do this and that and that, which are, which should be in the self-service portal to, to, to my belief, it should be accessible to anyone. And then when you need the custom, when you need to, to, to make sure that it's working, that, that you want to make the coffee for, for a project, then you will go to see your friend, your DevOps, and, and he would make the coffee for you. But, um, but I don't believe that it should, uh, you know, this is, this is what we provide, definitely. So how are you uh, pulling in CI and uh, uh, so continuous integration, continuous delivery functions inside of the tool. Like how how is that functioning inside of it? So on our side, what we saw on um, I mean we are working on enterprise market and we system integrator, manager, as provider, and public sector. <clears throat> they all live the same. They have they they spend so many years on having a CI which is working. They are not it's not perfect, but it's working. So. Some some of them use Jenkins, some of them use GitHub, some of, whatever they use, what they like. But when it comes to continuous deployment, there is this real need to have a centralization because at the end, we all know that writing some uh, kilometers of YAML doesn't matter. The tools that you are using is uh, is really complicated to do. That is why there is some problem of adoption in terms of pipelines uh, for all the developers and all the uh, all the DevOps. So on our side, we have embedded what we do believe a really nice software based on open source, which is called Concourse, mm-hmm. which is developed by Pivotal VMware. 
that back at the time already make the bet to have a visualization on the top of continuous deployment mm -hmm. and, and that you can plug to any CI. They also work on the CI, but it's more like an orchestration tool than just you know a CI. So what we say to our customers and what we do believe, and that is why we have integrated inside Secrets, is keep what you have done on the CI. It's working, you know, even if it's not perfect, you won't change it, you know, like if you're a big enterprise. And you, you, you already have, let's say, three, four, five different tools that does the CI, you know, because you never succeed to have everything in one place. But when it comes to the continuous deployment, use Concourse, which is completely embedded inside Secret, to centralize all your pipeline and be capable to, to, to start to implement some template, to simplify the capability, to, uh, to, to not recreate from scratch, but starting with the service catalog, you know, the same things that you embed inside them. Um, uh, inside OpenShift or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this capability to have some uh, reuse, reusability. So we embed natively this. Doesn't matter, you can uh, uh, deploy it on-prem or use uh, in the SaaS. But yeah, plug your CI on this CD and then centralize all your CD. And then you are, uh, we have also some engines that are capable to uh, to fetch what you already done on other on other software to be capable to have one centralized place of truth, because at some point we know that as I've said there is some uh, some problem of adoption when it comes to pipelines, and even it's not even between DevOps and Dev, it's even true between DevOps because mm -hmm. I thought on my side that it was just okay let's have you know three thousand DevOps and it it will work, but even between DevOps we have this capability to do a custom thing that we we will be the only one to understand, or I need to spend 30 minutes to understand what you have done, you know. And this at some point doesn't scale, you know, because even if between DevOps you are not capable to have something which is immutable, which is with the same technology, the same way of how you do the same uh, process, and the uh, and the um, yeah, that doesn't matter who you are which DevOps you are, when you arrive on the project, it's the same structure, then you are not able to scale. You are, as we did in the past, you know, one DevOps for X project, you know, 10, mm -hmm. 20, whatever, and then you have to hire more. But when you have three, four, 5,000 developers on an international company, you can't hire 1,000 dev DevOps, you know, it doesn't make any sense because you will just have a uncentralized yeah. place and, you know, without governance and all this stuff. And it's just more of the same. Yeah. I, I I hope you agree with what I'm saying. Yeah. But I mean, just just based on my experience on this. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm seeing so similar, uh, very similar, and we'll get into that. Like that, uh, we're gonna really dive into that. Um, what one of the things I wanted to also ask you about was, uh, I think in your uh, on the website, it's kind of described as reverse terraform. And what I really thought was really cool about this was it remind well f first off it reminds me of what uh, Red Hat was trying to do with cloud forms you know being able to discover what you currently have and and bring it under management but this is I actually think is uh, a little cooler because it's not just discover because it's not just discovering the infrastructure and bring it under management it's discovering the infrastructure documenting it in Terraform. And then I can also spit out uh, an architecture diagram, mm. which uh, which is very useful. Like it, and I can take that Terraform, check it into Git. If I, like to me, that's the new brownfield because there's a lot of things that everyone has done not bef you know, before DevOps, like, but they're just going to AW, everyone's just going to AWS with the company credit card and, and starting to build new infrastructure, but they weren't documenting it. Some of them weren't even using cloud formations, but they uh, or Terraform or anything like that. They just would go deploy it, and then and then uh, hope nothing would break, right? <laughs> and uh, and then and they didn't document it. Mm. So what what I'd like to understand is, you know, what you know, what's behind all that that discovery process? I've looked at the I've looked at the project, but what's actually behind behind that? Uh, I, I thought that was uh, one of uh, one of the cooler things that uh, one of the cooler projects out there that that's yeah. on uh, your GitHub. So um, 
Well, we do love, we share the love for open source. So uh, I strongly believe that one of the main value that every organization should have in this, uh, in this world is uh, use open source and own your automation. I mean, if we don't share this value, then it doesn't need to speak with Cycloid use whatever you would use. I mean, first you need to own your automation. But when you have said this, we see that there is a lot of companies that are struggling to have, to own, not to own this automation, but to be capable to generate at scale open source usage and to be capable to have, not for a couple of projects with DevOps, but for all the projects, having at least infrastructure as code, configuration management and CICD pipeline. But when you when you have said this, I mean, when you have a couple of thousands of projects, it's really complicated. And it's even more complicated that, as you know, we start to build some depth on automation, which is kind of crazy, you know, because, I mean, we see quite a lot of time that just let's keep Terraform. Um, the time that you update your 1000 project, you will already have like a couple of uh, major change between the first project that you have on Terraform and the, and the thousand. So what drives Cycloid on this is we need to make sure that it's always up to date and that we should save the time for the DevOps to be capable to make sure that on every project you have this. So we said, okay, Terraform is complicated to adopt for non-DevOps, so you need to help others and you need to save some time for DevOps to generate some infrastructures. So on our side, we developed this open source tool, which is called Terraconita, which is uh, implemented uh, uh, natively inside Cycloid to make sure that uh, at every steps, it respects the best practice and you can give access to the automation without losing the control. So as a developer, I can uh, create a project on whatever AWS, GCP, Azure, VMware, whatever. And then I know that if I'm launching Terraconita, the Terraform will be made for, will be made for me. And then it will create a stack, like a service catalog that I can reuse, that will use my project. The formulas inside that will simplify the capability to interact with Terraform. And then everything that I need in terms of, as you said, uh, mention uh, infrastructures diagram and all this stuff to make sure that as a DevOps, I will save my time to something that should be industrialized. You know, we always know that infrastructures diagram are never up to date because uh, we don't have time to do this. And with infrastructure as code, it's even changing more. So if you don't have a system that makes sure that you will have infrastructure as code set and you will always have your infrastructure as uh, uh, diagram up to date, then you lose quite a lot of visibility or you just create some debt that maybe one day you will fix it, you know. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, I really like the premise of helping the adoption of Terraform and other and other similar tools because they're complex. Terraform was supposed to solve the the problem of multi-cloud management, but really I have to have a different Terraform for every cloud. Uh, that that's really the reality. Yeah, we hope we only have fifty percent of code that is uh, multi-cloud, you know, but at the end, you know, well, it's another debate, but, you know, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, what do we speak about, you know, and and about the, the future of Kubernetes, will everything will, will be in, inside Kubernetes? On my side, you know, I don't know, just yeah. at some point as a DevOps, what I take care is doesn't matter where we have decided to deploy or, but when it comes to the how, we should make sure that it's respect our best practices to make sure that we save our time because we don't scale. Yeah. Simple as that. What's next for Cycloid from a technology perspective? I know there you have some new announcements you've made recently around like uh, FinOps. Perhaps you can expand on that. So there is uh, multiple things on the technology side. So on our side, inside Cycloid, we have three kind of modules. The, um, we have the module around the governance, around the, the deployment, and around the management. And thus, on this management, we have a FinOps modules that arrive before your project, when you deploy a project to help you know how much does it cost, which is based on, an open, on, on a, another open source project, which is called TerraCost. 
that help you to know before you deploy how much does it cost and to you know uh, being capable to manage some budget and quota which are quite important because one of the uh, things that doesn't help DevOps scale is uh, DevOps can't be open uh, open bar you know it's gonna be like everyone have access to everything and does everything you know it doesn't work like this so uh, on the FinOps side we have um, a cost management control uh, that help you to centralize uh, the capability to visualize all your costs on different cloud provider, AWS, GCP, and Azure. Uh, you we will also be uh, implement VMware because uh, there is also a topic on this. So this is this is what we have uh, released on the new FinOps part because at at some point you need to take care about the beginning of the project and the end of your invoice, <laughs> which is a which is a big thing. Um, all our investments um, so far are going on two projects, which I do believe are even more sense about so what we are doing, is how do you implement uh, the concept of uh, using, using in, the, in the simple way and uh, in the most efficient way the different infrastructures around the carbon impact. So... Uh, and based on this, we, do, we didn't say so much things, but at some point what we want and what we all know is that when you use a traditional infrastructure, you use between 30 to 40% of your resources. When you are going to the cloud, you are between 40 to 60%. And when you use uh, Kubernetes, you are between 60 to 70% of the resources that you have. But still, as we all know, everything is not on Kubernetes, even if we would love to. Um, we still have this uh, heterogeneity of, of infrastructures. And at some point, I, sh I do believe uh, we should work on an on a orchestration, an open source orchestration that are capable to, uh, based on various criteria, relocate resources depending of, um, of, uh, of this criteria. And uh, one which I do believe will be and is start to be more and more important is um, what is the cost in terms of carbon effort that you are doing, you know, the ecological impact of the usage of infrastructures. So um, there is this one, this kind of multi-orchestration topic. Um, and there is also the capability, um, we, uh, which is not so simple right now, to be capable in the FinOps module, in the, in the cost management, um, to be capable to know what is the impact what is the cost of your infrastructures in terms of uh, ecological impact, in terms of uh, carbon impact? As you see, as you see, there is uh, the market, the cloud provider that start to launch this capability to address API and to go through uh, uh, this kind of data, you know. But we are just only at the beginning, and I, I, I'm quite sure that between the cloud provider, we won't be capable to compare what is comparable because they will have their own way of doing things you know so i really do believe again based on open source and based on um, on uh, on the various foundation that are working on this to be capable to try to work on a certain standardization of uh, okay if you use this if you deploy this kind of project this this will be the ecological impact that you will have i mean you take it if we, if it's your first criteria is money then do it but at least you know what is the impact yeah. and then i do believe we need to have some we need to help company be capable to communicate on okay if i don't uh, take only the um, if i don't take only the the criteria of pricing, but I also take the criteria of uh, ecological impact. I should be capable to uh, to communicate on it and 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 yes, and to spread the word because well, it's a teeny part in all this um, uh, ecological impact uh, story, you know, global warming. But I think it's uh, something that should should be considered because well, as you know, we consume too much, you know, even if yeah. on, on the... that. That's really, uh, I, I think that's really important. I mean, I, I, I'm pr I try to be conscious about that. And f frankly, more and more companies, uh, you know, it's starting to be in their 
their, their ecological impact is starting to show up in their uh, annual reports. So uh, I think that's really important to be able to see that impact right away, even if it's not in your own data centers, like the things that you're, you're in control of. I, I think that's that's really cool. Uh, yeah, and we, we lack some visibility right now. I mean, clearly, yeah, you know, it's like... Absolutely. Uh, so um, I think there is a work to do and uh, we want to partic participate on this because, yeah... If we can bring our piece on this, I mean, uh, at least it will help uh, uh, end user to make sure that they have the right level of uh, information to decide where they want to yeah. be. You know, yeah, every yeah, every little bit helps. Mm. Oh, so sorry, it's a little <laughs> bit far about what we have <laughs> spoke about uh, DevOps uh, and, no, and, and cool. hybrid cloud, but uh, yeah, I mean, no, no, that that's a. Uh, uh, I don't get too much into advocacy here, but yeah, that's my that that's one of the things I am pretty uh, passionate about myself. So that's really cool. So, so so you know how complex is the topic behind the marketing effort? You know, yeah. Uh, technologically wise, we are almost nowhere. The API from cloud provider, we all know that they would provide what they want to provide. Mm -hmm. So and and on the orchestration layer. Uh, so far, everyone tend to uh, to make sure that everything is going in their tools, you know, and they don't really care about uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the the consummation and the orchestration part. So I strongly believe um, we can be much more efficient as uh, as only what we have, you know. Yeah, I, wa I want to change gears over to really more talk about DevOps. I, I think uh, you've... Uh... You've already said the the term uh, uh, earlier, and I, I believe it was uh, DevX. I know you've been advocating for a, essentially a course correction in the messaging around DevOps. Like, like from my point of view, I, I feel like everyone has a different definition of what DevOps is. I think that's a big part of the problem. And they're also uh, adopting different and sometimes and, and even different groups that are the DevOps, you know, part of the DevOps teams are also adopting opposing project management methods like that. That's kind of my, my point of view, like really, really like you can do DevOps with any project management methodology, but you need to, but they can't be opposing methodologies across different teams. <laughs> uh, so but that, that's my point of view of part of, uh, of the problem. But what's your, you know, what's your take on this? When we speak about developer experience, you know, it's going much more than only the DevOps topic. It's about, you know, process, the way of how you do things, the way of what is the experience that you bring to developers uh, to, to at the end be much more efficient in their daily life. And, you know, it's 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 a it's a global topic you know from process tools and the way of how you interact with all these tools and cloud and and the devops area in this uh, developer experience it's just only one piece because at some point when you speak about developer experience every developer will have to at some point deploy what they have done i mean design what they have done deploy it and 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 run it doesn't matter if it's uh, them or if it's a devops team so, um, and today, what I strongly believe on the DevOps field is that we care about the technicity because, you know, we love open source and, and, and we really take care about how do I do the best technological uh, product. Uh, and, and, and we do believe that coming from this, it will be used by the dev. At the end, I strongly believe it's, it's it's completely wrong because we don't take in consideration the UX UI experience about how you are capable as a developer to interact with uh, the tools and the cloud without having to develop some expertise. And this is exactly the GitOps approach. You know, the GitOps approach. I mean, the, the representation of what I just said is GitOps. You know, I don't know how many companies do I I've met that. I told me, yeah, we will do everything in GitOps. And then they come back one year, two years, three years after and say, yeah, we have everything on GitOps. You know, we do this practice and all this stuff, but we don't have adoption for developers. I mean, why are a technological market 
should be different as the user market of, uh, let's say, just a a Apple, you know? The success of Apple is that you have a guidance, it's simple to use, it's beautiful, and you have an experience, a user experience that Apple users love it. You love it, you hate it, what doesn't matter. I mean, there is plenty of people that using it. But on the technological field, we say, okay, the reference is the line of code that you can find on Git. I strongly, I strongly believe that it, could, it couldn't be the answer. Of course, if you want to own your automation, everything should be on your, on your Git, you know. And if you are DevOps, you will attack directly your, your Git and, uh, and, and your tools and cloud. But the 99% of the rest of the world, you can't ask them to be aware about everything that you have done on the DevOps side. It's, it's just not possible. There is other statistic that I always uh, remind because it's something that we should never forget when we speak about developers as a DevOps field. A, dev, a developer used 5% of the repository that you can find on the Git, an average of 5%, and they use generally work on five repository. So imagine that this developer will know where to find the Terraform and Zbol and so on file, how to use it, how to create it, how to deploy it, how to manage it. I mean, it's a, it's a, it will never happen. So uh, on our side, on the technology, technology market that we are working in, I, I think that sometimes we are, uh, we are focusing too much on the technological beauty and not enough on the, on the, on the UX UI that need to be part of this developer experience that, oh, I need to deploy my project. How do I do it? And then you should arrive in a certain uh, um, experience. And this is where we strongly believe at Cycloid uh, we should come with with the respect of the best practices and the governance for the DevOps. You know, it shouldn't be a black box if you want to own your automation. Makes sense. What do you think the industry needs to do to correct the direction we're going? In many organizations that I work with, yeah, they're not much different than they were 10 years ago, r around when de the term DevOps was first coined. They're, they're just as siloed or DevOps is just a new team and it's just another barrier for dev and op and the actual operations teams to work together and to get code out the door. Yeah, definitely. Focus less. Uh, my advice was would be focus less on the technology aspect less on you know uh, migrate everything and you know about it how it's complicated to migrate everything on the kubernetes approach uh, stop to be ayatollah about this kind of microservices and all this. this is technological topic you know and be focused more on how do you help your developer being more efficient when it comes to devops and when it comes to what you have developed as a devops because there is no tools, including Cycloid, that will do the job, everything for DevOps, and tomorrow you don't need any DevOps anymore. It will never happen. But you need to save your time as a DevOps, so you should go to see your developer and how can I help you to make sure that what I've developed, it can be used in a simple way. And so far, I never see some DevOps team that are doing, that, are, that, that, are, that, that does that. They, they love to use new tools. They love the technological aspect of cycloid, but 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 they don't see the importance of a really nice UX UI and a really nice rail to be capable to to um, to to scale the DevOps and hybrid cloud approach across the entire organization. So it will be my piece of advice: is less focusing on the technology, more on the on the user need, and stop thinking that everything uh, that that GitOps is the only solution. It's it's the way of how we should we work as a DevOps because it's in our roots. But you can't ask a developer to start from scratch and use everything that you have done in the Git. I mean, that is why it doesn't scale. You know, 80% of the organizations is five years according to the uh, state of DevOps report made by uh, Google and, and and big companies. Uh, mentioned that they are struggling with the DevOps approach since five years. So nothing has changed. As you said, since 10 years, you know, we just renamed the team and nothing has changed because in some cases, it's a new team that just, that, that, that acts as another barrier. 
Yeah, definitely. So, so yeah, it doesn't matter if you want to, 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 to buy a product or to develop your interface uh, um, internally, but yeah, try to help your developers being capable to address everything that you need and stop thinking that everything should be done, yeah. you know, to Git. Yeah, makes sense. Any final takeaways, thoughts for the audience? What I strongly believe is important is that DevOps are gold and we should take care of them. So if anyone is having some DevOps in their organization, we all know how the market is tense, so we should help them focusing on one matter. And this is, I, I do believe, uh, one takeaway is that we always know how it's complicated to hire and to keep your talent. So make sure that when you have some talent, they can focus on one matter and less on, you know, the, 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 the 50 push and repetitive tasks that we can find on the DevOps field. Speaking of hiring, uh, is is Cyclic currently hiring? I know you have operations in Europe. I believe mm. you're just opening operations in North America. Yeah. Uh, so on our side, um, uh, we have launched uh, Cycloid a couple of years ago. We were fully remote. So back at the time when I spoke that, uh, you know, take care of people. If they want to work uh, in remote, let's do it. Say, no, remote doesn't work, doesn't scale, and so on. But it seems that the COVID went through this journey so now uh, there is less uh, this kind of uh, of topic even if as you know at for that you were also quite advanced on this especially on the technical field less on the sales <laughs> aspect but more on the technical thing so um, so yeah we are fully remote uh, since day one so we are hiring uh, across europe doesn't matter um, where you are located and and um, and and in US, um, front end, back end, uh, our stack is based on Vue.js and Go. Uh, so so yeah, I mean we continue to hire also some some uh, technical uh, um, uh, account managers, some some um, uh, some few DevOps to help evangelization, and also some evangelization, which are which which where well, we definitely need it because as you know. There is so much need of evangelize the best practices, the new concept, I mean, new raising of developer experience that has to be also defined. I hope it won't be, you know, as vague as the DevOps. So, so yeah, definitely um, we hire across Europe and US. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh, so what's the best way for our listeners to get started with uh, a cycloid? If you are DevOps, we have... As you have seen, um, uh, three open source uh, software that we do believe can help you in your day-to-day -day operation around uh, Terracross, Terraconita, and Inframap. So use it. Uh, it's simple as it is. And then if you're interested to, uh, to see how we can leverage your work, we have plenty of uh, sandbox and... Uh, and, vi and videos uh, that you can find on our website, uh, public documentation, all this stuff that would explain how how we why, how we try to have the the best world, the, the best of the two world, you know, the flexibility for for the developer and and the governance uh, for for the DevOps. So so yeah, I mean, um, Patreon and all this stuff, you can find it uh, directly on our website without having to speak with us, because we know you know that. Uh, DevOps like to speak with people, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, and I'll have all the uh, links to the open source projects and to Cycloid's website in the show notes. Really do appreciate you coming on, Benjamin. It, it's been a great conversation. I'm Thank you. We'll, we'll need to get you back on again soon, when, uh, especially if there's any new fun announcements. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for joining us today. As always, your feedback is welcome. Head on over to sudo.show slash discuss. If you would like more of the Pseudo Show, you can find it over at sudo.show and on social media at pseudoshowpodcast. Make sure to also follow the Pseudo Show on YouTube at sudo.show slash YouTube. You can catch more awesome content over our network partners, destinationlinux.network. 
Make sure to also support the show on Patreon at pseudo.show slash Patreon. There will be a link in the show notes. You can follow me on most social media at dbrennanjohnson or my website at open-tech.net and new content at destinationlinux.network. Thank you for listening to The Pseudo Show, where business meets open source. Until next time.